Hello and welcome to Icon Resource video 7, Shading and Shadows. Now we're going to create the brush of our icon. A paintbrush seems like a pretty complex shape to do, but it's okay. I'll guide you through it. Start with a rounded rectangle. Make sure that the corners aren't too big, but also not too small. This is just about perfect. Place a guide. Again, without snap, it may not be that easy to find the middle. Enable snap, and then drag down from the ruler to create the guide. It will snap in the middle, and then you can disable snap to work more granularly. Select the two bezier points at the outer edges of the left side, and push them towards the guide. Make sure the two points meet, so you have a nice and fine tip. Do the same to the front, but make sure the tip doesn't end in a round shape. It should slope slightly towards the right. You can then transform the entire shape, so you can compress it a little bit, and add two points a bit left to the rightmost points. Push these outwards, so you can create a brush-like thick shape. Now use the pen tool to add a point to the tip of the brush. Extend it. You'll see two points here that can bug you. Try to delete them with the pen tool. You can only have to, you only have to click on the points with the pen tool to delete them. Now extend the handles of the outmost points to make them nice and round. There we go. That looks a lot more like a brush handle already. Now it's time to make the metallic parts. Again, this is just freehand drawing. Try to get it right, use your guides, and if everything fails, you can always, I will show you a technique in a bit with which you can mirror components like these. Let's say you want this mirrored in a nice metal piece which can hold the hairs of the brush. You only need to copy the path, paste it, and transform it. So we have flipped it vertically, now check your path and press combine. As you can see you have two lines at the sides that stack out which meant the, the sides weren't really meeting. If you move it up a bit and combine it you have a good shape. Now it's all symmetrical and good. There's two points here so I deleted one and I extended it a bit. Now let's create the hairs. Again, this is a bit of freehand drawing. Just do what, what you think is best, and you can always resort to photographical or real life reference. Drawing a shape isn't that hard. You don't need to get it nailed it the first time around. Just make sure you get it roughly, and then tweak the curves like I am now. You can see this is very wobbly. It's not even symmetrical. However, if you take the points and drag them along a bit, you can quickly get an idea of what looks better and what looks symmetrical. Again, it's all about something looking convincing. It doesn't have to be like it is in the real world. Tweak this basic shape a bit. We're soon going to use it for a nice pattern of, of hairs, but right now you just have to imagine that. Make a very, very basic shape, as if you were drawing a cartoon. Now, as you zoom out, you see the proportions of the objects aren't really great yet. So let's take these outer bits, use the white cursor select points tool to push them together a bit, and now select the leftmost points and drag them all a bit to the right. Now take the rightmost points of the brush tip and drag them to the right. Now the proportions look a lot better. Let's start work on some shading. This typical metal shading we've had before. When we were making our pencil, remember? In this case let's edit the gradient a bit to make a hard light gradient which is a nice, hard, reflected, metallic texture. 
I'll try to use that for now. Alternate between blending modes and see what works best. We'll do more complex shading with it in a bit. Right now, try to get the common feel of it down. Then let's do a bevel for the top highlight. After all, the light is coming from the top. I'll vary a bit with the depth. I'll check if the black bevel works or not. Well, I think I'm happy with it. Although the shading of this thing is far from finished, you should try to imagine it as a whole. Does, does this work as metal? Well, for now it does. Let's do the same basic highlight work on the brush, but do it very slightly. We don't want it to seem like some sort of bizarre cylinder that's, that's hanging out of the top of my brush handle. Use a soft inner shadow as well to suggest its roundness. Making it soft and diffuse is key here. Let's make this thing a bit bigger. This way it had seen the piece between the brush handle and the hairs is actually holding the hairs. So let's make a bit of texture now. Remember to make it big enough. And once again render fibers. Select a nice chunk, copy it, and take it back to our document. Let's zoom out a bit here. Once again, we could let this occupy a large area of our document, so we know for sure that the pixel part of it, the texture, won't have problems later when we want to relarge re this icon. We could make this a little bit less opaque, but I think I know how I want this. We want it on this shape, so command click the vector mask, invert your selection, and clear the rest. Now distort the hairs a bit. It's important to give a sense of direction, of course, because the hairs aren't really straight, but a bit, bit tilted. Now experiment with blending modes again. See what works out and what doesn't. This is not definitive yet, you just need to have a very slight indication. Okay, now we're going to make them really straight lines. Select motion blur from the blur menu in the plugin in the filter section and set an adequate distance. Now I can see it starts to look a lot more like the hair using on a brush. Just check out the blending modes and distort it again to let it assume the perspective of the brush hairs. Now, doesn't that look a lot more convincing? Now we've got a basic brush nailed. We just need some shading in the handle and we need to refine the rest, of course. Let's start the shading for the handle first. Duplicate the layer so we can make a highlight. Resize it down a bit. We'll work on the proportions later. Again, stretch it now. It's a long highlight, after all. If you look at a brush, hand brush handle in reality, it has this high specular highlight, which means it's like a small hard white line that runs over the surface. This is because it's slightly reflective, 
and has a plasticky feel to it. We're going to try it and simulate that with this shape. So make it rather thin and use this curve to simulate the curve of the surface itself. Making a subtle shape for this is key, but again, just experiment with it, see what works out. You may want to make, let the curve run past the surface as well as possible, reduce the fill opacity to zero, and put a gradient in it. Give it a straight angle for now, make it linear, and fool around with it, see what works out. What looks best? Put it the screen. No, let's try overlay. Overlay doesn't work. Let's try something else. Drag it down completely. Unclick your mask so the lines don't get in your way and test the appearance of the shape. What does this need? Well, I think I know. Let's increase its opacity. Select color dodge. In this case, linear dodge seems to work out best. And variate it a bit. Well, there we go. We have a, re a very nice little specular highlight now. Just adjust the edge and add a new gradient overlay. A little bit of reflection of the paper it's lying on. Remember, we do want this brush to be used in an icon with a document. Even if this reflected light from the document it's lying on gets blocked out later when we are making the shading and the shadows, that doesn't matter. You just got to make sure you factor it in with the making. And keep tweaking those shapes. You also need to make it subtle enough to make it believable. Let's work on some shading and perfectionism of the brush tip. I think it would be a good idea to give it some detail. So enlarge the tip and we're going to do some manual labor to make this a bit more realistic. Add a lot of points to the outside edges. For each point, option click it, and for each odd point, keep the handles. Each point you option clicked no longer has handles and therefore is a straight end for each curve. You can make a nice little dents this way. So repeat this process by simply extending the handles of the higher points, creating new points and deleting their handles with an option click. As you repeat this process, it's, it's important to notice how the texture works, so you can really work with that. For example, here's a dark line. So let's make a little dip here. This kind of details makes it look convincing on high sizes. Make sure to keep a consistent workflow going on. You need to make something that always looks the same. And don't get distracted from little errors like that. They always happen. They, always, they happen to me, they happen to the best artists. Photoshop sometimes just doesn't understand what you want. But keep working. You'll figure it out and after a while you, you'll have a high speed working speed and producing cool stuff.
at no time. Now we've got some nice irregular lines. That looks a lot more like a real brush tip. Let's give it a bit more diffuse shading. And keep experimenting. Just see what works out. Okay, make it more convincing by duplicating it, changing the texture, experimenting with blending modes. Let's tweak the shading of this friend a little bit. This is the metal piece between the handle and the tip. Disable all layer effects and the fill opacity and make a new dark overlay. You can simply reverse your gradient for that. So click reverse. Make the scale a bit bigger, increase the opacity a bit and see what works out best as the shadowy part of that of this middle piece. Let's add some shadow that is cast on the brush as well. This is a nice final detail. Create a small black circle. And you can do two things. You can either add a drop shadow to it and keep it as a vector object, or simply rasterize it and apply a Gaussian blur to it. This way you'll also have a shadow. It doesn't really matter at this stage, because we just want a nice little shadow here. We can always recreate it in vector since we have the source file right here. Experiment with the blending modes for your shadow. Check out what looks best. Let's tweak this a bit more. The color of the brush tip seems a bit too bright now. It seems overly saturated. By changing the color, the underlying color, any layer with overlay or color burn and color dodge will have their color affected. With less saturation on the background layer, the overall effect will be less saturated. Let's also give a nice shadowy edge to the brush handle. This is essential as it will have to lay on the paper. And with an, a shadow under it, it would be look very strange if there was no dark shading around it. Keep tweaking that shadow and keep experimenting with it. The important thing is the consistency with the middle piece and not making it seem overly black. Too much contrast makes the icon very cartoony, which you can see very well with this inner shadow effect. There are no such outlines in real life. And again, your best reference is the world around you. Pick up a brush. How does it look? With a soft shadow like this, I'm content. Let's see if we can tweak this highlight a bit more. If you make a screen, it'll just be a cool highlight, as opposed to the dodging highlights, which give it a strange yellowish look. I just want a clean white highlight. Once again, tweak the shape. It has to be a lot thinner if you want to make a double highlight. So extend it and refine the edges and curves. There. That looks already looks a lot better. Now 
Now you can see this is a much more convincing after a lot of shading. This is the kind of shading you'll have to do for any object. The most important lesson is that you check out reference and that you simply keep experimenting. This way I bet you can realize just about any object with this combination of techniques. Making the base shapes, shading it all up, checking out your reference and perfecting it. Just keep perfecting it. For icons to work on all backgrounds you must cut out this texture which is left over from the motion blur. Control click the vector mask of the tip, invert your selection again and press backspace or clear. Now that those erroneous pieces of background texture have been re removed, we can safely put this brush on just about any background. And that's quite necessary, because right now we'll start working with shadows. So let's copy this, merged, once again, select everything, copy it merged, and make a good doc big document. You may want to do two types of shadowing. One we've seen before, where you want it to lay flat on a surface. This is relatively easy, although the unique brush shape may be a bit confusing. You need to experiment with it a lot. So let's uh, once again create a few duplicate layers. Blur them a bit. Place them strategically. And keep creating copies with lower opacities and higher blur levels. You can also experiment scaling them a bit bigger so the shadow fall off is a bit bigger. And remember, th the most blurry shadows have the lowest opacity. A good tip might be that you double check that your shadows are in fact black. If you make shadows with something else than black, they will show up as a sort of glow on a black out background. It's very important that they are completely black. There we are, once again recreating the shadow. And you can see the obvious problems already arising. What's not typical in a lifelike brush is that the shadow of the brush tip is so solid. We'll need to do something about that. So experiment a bit with the positioning of the shadows. Let's take a close look at the brush tip. We're going to cut out some hairs, like that. Just make sure your points don't meet and make these little incisions into the tip. Remember, this is all temporary. We, al we have a nice source file and this is just some of our, of our testing grounds. Here we can test if this really works, and if it works, we can upload it into the document. After all, this file is quite large. Well, that should do it. Clear it, put it to lead. And you can see that the shadows are indeed much too solid for the brush tip. So take the erasure, give it a good size, and adjust the hardness. The hardness is how blurred the brush tip is. Put hardness to 0% and give it a few erases. Of course, on a monish opaque layer. This doesn't work, so I'm going to give it a lower opacity. This means you can more gradually erase portions of the background. Be sure to erase in your shadow layers, of course, and not in your brush layer. Once the shadows are a bit tweaked, it looks a lot better. Now for the other type of shadow. If light comes from there, we might want to do a shadow which is cast on the ground. This is a cast shadow. Some dark icons will have to use it, but you might find other circumstances where you 
where this technique might be useful. Use distort to distort your shadow in the right direction. Be careful not to go too far with it, or else you'll distort it in very weird ways. You can see that it's tapering now, thanks to the distort. That's no problem. We want it to gradually fade out anyway. Keep playing around with those points. You will master them. Yes, that's just about okay. Now I've got your shadow layer, once again duplicated. And go on, a, go on a blurring streak. One low opacity high blur layer and one high opacity low blur layer. The only problem is that the shadow isn't that solid at the end. So once again we're going to have to do some manual work. Select both shadows, merge the layers via layer merge and make a big brush tip. Make a few clicks. You don't have to drag, just do it very gradually and precisely. This way you can create a shadow that gradually fades away. You can also do this with layer masks, incidentally, but I've always preferred the manual way of doing it with the eraser. Then proceed to blur the shadow a bit more. Cast shadows are a lot less straight than the normal sh drop shadows you see in most icons. It requires a lot of tweaking. Of course, the area under the brush tip in this case is the area where the most light is obscured. So you need to move the shadow to the right a bit and erase it. See, that already looks a lot better. It looks like it's suspended in space. Now we're going on to the next video in Icon Resource. Composing the icon, where we'll finally finish our very own icon.